Welcome to this stateless code video. This is video number four in our series, Enough Inkscape to be Dangerous. Uh, so you can see here, I'm trying to, on Ubuntu, use, um, set up a WordPress site on my other series, uh, statelesscode.com WordPress. This is a local, de local development environment and an Ubuntu machine. So you can see, this is what the logo is supposed to look like. Uh, another example, that's the um, uh, situation there. And then you can see here, the uh, because these are fonts, they're getting all jumbled together. So that's our, our problem case, and we're going to try to solve it in this video. So I'm um, going to be switching back and forth between uh, my Ubuntu machine and my Mac machine. So I'm going to... Now that we've got the uh, illustrated the problem, I'm going to switch over to the Mac. So I'm over here on my Mac now. I'm going to go in and I'm going to open the transparent version of my stateless code logo. You can see here I've got a a layer with the anarchy symbol and a layer with the the text here you can see the the spacing works so that when it um, is present the um, the size and spacing doesn't run into each other or anything like that so what I'm going to do is I've taken a look and you can take text and convert it into the put this on the path so path put on path and then object to path and then I should be able to click the ungroup button here you can see and I, I now have individual items here that are their own objects. So if I wanted to, if we look at the layering here right now, if I wanted to modify these, this particular item, I could do so. And say I wanted to drag it down one grid section, I'll undo that. So my goal right now is kind of getting everything to look like it looks on the map, Mac. So I'm not intending to actually change anything here. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do save as here. Call this transparent to vector and we'll save it and then I should be able to now go into one of my other close this one actually going to go in and make a whole so I'm going to make a directory here and then copy each of these directories should now have a, a go to this backups directory have a copy of my folder there I'll pause repeat that for all the other folders there 
All right, so I've got my backups now. I'm going to go in back into um, the transparent here, move to trash, and then in the rename the vector one just normal transparent now that I've got a, a backup of everything in the case that something goes wrong. So uh, so then we've got the Ins Inkscape um, logo here. So I'll open that. Got our scroll out. So that came in as layers. So what I'm going to try to do is get this as exact as possible. I'm going to add a layer three. import my transparent here. And I want to include it as an editable object in the current file. And then I want to get this, Ooh. make sure I'm only modifying the layer that I want here. I've got layer layer three, and then I should be able to delete layer one, layer two, and then I should be able to save this and then save as and this was a I think it was an optimized SVG is what I had So try that, and this is the logo that logo that I want. So I'm going to to now go in finish actually doing my item there. So I'm going to copy this over now to the Ubuntu machine and see if this provided what I need it to. So these are the the new versions I copied over from the Mac back here on Ubuntu. So I'm going to try to copy this logo into the directory and see if it affects the, um, the visual of that logo in the um, WordPress theme. So I've copied image into the theme directory. And it looks like it did not fix anything. Oh, that's because I need to run yarn build on the
So my machine crashed while I was doing this. Let's try that again. So we're going to do yarn build. Get to the correct directory first, then run yarn build. Pause and let this complete. It has compiled successfully. Let's try a refresh on the screen. And lo and behold, our logo is fixed using the graphical output rather than the font output. Um, well, try a couple other things here. Let's pull up the um, developer tools, go into responsive mode. It looks okay in responsive mode. Go back to full screen. And I think that gives us what we need. We'll head back to the Mac and see about converting some of our other stuff, see if there's anything interesting. I thought there was nothing interesting left in converting these, but you can see here the D. So I look, went to go and convert my Nerd Dice SVG. The D20 here, all of the sides on this are text. So I'm going to go in here to the. I'm going to keep this version with the 8 and the 2 because it looks better, even though the, uh, the algorithm of a D20 indicates that this is the way it's supposed to look. Um, this looks better with glasses, so and that's how Wizards of the Coast does the D20s they make. So it's an acceptable variant. I'll pull this over, and so we will go into our layers. We will hide and lock the triangles. And then you can see all of these texts are um, are skewed. So I went in, like if you go to a, an actual D20, the way that I went about doing this, and I'll, I'll probably create a new, um, a separate video for how that works, but the, um, all of these text items now need to be converted into paths rather than text. So for each of these, I should be able to um, text, put on path, path, object path, and repeat that for each of these. I'll pause and do that. So I've got all of the text converted to path. Save that. And for now, I'm just going to do the, um, the alt one. Maybe I'll talk more about this as I, um, in the episode I do on the, the D20 and I'll go, I'll go through kind of the process that I used to do that. And then we'll actually do some of the other dice like the D12 and the um, D8, some of the other ones. But now that I've got this, I should be able to go in here, I'll zoom in. Oh, what have I done? We'll just start over. So here, scroll in a bunch, look at our base, look at our logo. Did I do a transparent of this? I think I would have. Let me, let me actually check that before I continue here. Transparent, escape, yep. That's what I want to fix, and then I'll apply that to all the other ones. So close this without saving, open, 
the transparent one. And you can see here we've got the stateless layer, the ruby and glasses layer, and the dye layer. So we'll rename this layer. Stateless old, rename this layer. Die old, better than dying young, I guess. And then we'll create a new layer. Come on, keyboard. And put stateless there. Lock all of these except for die and stateless. So on the stateless layer, we want to import the stateless code logo, or yeah, transparent stateless code logo. That we redid. Oh, I need to import it, not open it. I've got that. Let's give myself some more canvas here. We'll make everything else disappear for now, except for stateless code, old and stateless. And align these. going to have to micromanage my X and Y here. Oh, there we go. That overlaps perfectly. Now I'll lock stateless, delete stateless old. And then do the same thing for die. Well now, Hide stateless, show the old die, import the new die, the alt is the one that I want. Oh, that is huge. I have to scroll out here to get this. Scaled properly. Holding down the, the control key there on the Mac Actually, I can just 
what are the I'll unlock diode for a minute here and find out what the properties are of this I'll just and so what I did was I took the uh, the X, Y, width, and height attributes from die old and just copied them to die new. So if we look, the layer now looks identical. So I can remove die old. And now I've got my three layers as they were but with the text converted to vectors. Save the file. And quit. And you get how to do the rest, so. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.